what is preventing most people from moving in the direction that they want to move is a lack of discipline. And no one wants to hear that answer. It's the harshest answer. Yeah. This is hard work, it's every day. When they see that word discipline, it's actually slapped in the face because they know it's true. You have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. That's the most powerful thing in the world. What are you gonna get without discipline? Are you gonna be in good physical shape without yeah. discipline? Are you gonna be financially successful without discipline? Yeah. Are, you gonna, are you gonna become more intellectually powerful without discipline? You're gonna see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. If you want to make progress in your life, you got to have discipline. Discipline equals freedom. You want freedom in your life? You want to achieve what it is you want to achieve? How do you do that? You do it through discipline. You do it through hard work. You do it by knowing what it is you're supposed to do and, and then doing actually it. doing it. <laughs> yeah. You have to face yourself. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? It starts with yourself, man. Through hard work, you can outwork anybody. Like, I'm going to be extreme in my discipline. Somebody asked me that on social media. How do you master discipline? I'm like, you don't. You don't. You keep working at it, though. Every day. Yes. It takes power. It takes effort. It takes discipline to break the old you. What gives you confidence not being afraid is overcoming the fear. There's no one in the world that enjoys taking criticism. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. The tougher things you go through, the more confidence you're gonna have, the more confidence you have, the better you're gonna get. But I'm gonna work and try and make myself better. And that's the mentality you have. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. What I did was what I knew how to do, which was work. You figure it out by going inside yourself. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. That's what I'm gonna do. When I was a little tiny kid, you know, five, six, the only thing I can remember was wanting to be some kind of commando. There was no, there was not a question for me. I knew what I wanted to do. I never thought about quitting at any moment in time. SEAL Teams is, is going to war. That's what we do. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior, and I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than the normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. And, and the fact of the matter is, bullets don't have your name on it. Bullets say to whom it may concern. And the bullet doesn't care who you are. They don't care how much training you've had. They don't care how well prepared you are. And if it's your day, it's your day. And so I think once you get to a point where you recognize and accept the fact that you can, you can die, then you can move past that. That's a really high percentage of people that quit, but there's also people that fail. We have the ability to go in such a space if you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to do something much better than what he thought he was. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're going to die. I worry about missing out on opportunities that I have because I got friends that will never get the chance to execute on opportunities because they didn't come home. And, I, and that's literally what I told my guys was we've, we've crossed the line. And there's no, there's no possible way to replace or describe or overcome the amount of just heart-wrenching sadness that you feel when you lose a teammate. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what to say. First time, second time, 
third time, what I did was, and I told my guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. The only thing that I know to do is to go back to work. And I do know this, if Mark was here, he would want us to go back to work. And so we're gonna lock and load our weapons, and we're gonna go do what we do. That's the reality of, of combat. When you see people in these hard situations, that's when human nature gets revealed. And the more you can understand human nature, the better leader you're gonna be. There's only one type of human being that can't improve as a leader, and that's the, that's the person that lacks humility. Because when someone lacks humility, you can't teach them. A leader has to be balanced. The older I get, the less I know. One of the things that I realize in a leadership position is that the words that you say matter, the actions you take matter. People are listening, people are watching, people are respecting or disrespecting you based on how you carry yourself. Relationships and trust are almost the same word, right? A relationship is something that we've built trust. Now you can have a bad relationship and what does that mean? That means there's no trust there. I don't trust you, we have a bad relationship. The way I build trust with people is I give them trust. That's how I build trust. I give it. I give trust to build trust. If I micromanage you and I don't let you make any decisions yourself, well, you're never gonna step up and learn how to lead because you don't get to make any decisions for yourself. Would you rather win or be like? Well, I'm gonna tell you those aren't opposites. The team that likes each other, they win. I'm trying to take the lessons that I was lucky enough to learn and get them to as many people as I can so they don't yeah. have to suffer through the same mistakes that I made. I mean, you're always gonna have regret. You, you know, I don't spend a lot of time with regret. That's good. You know, because there's there's not much that you can do about it. Yeah. So what what the way I look at regret is what did I learn from it? What, what did I learn from whatever thing I'm looking at that I know I could have done a better job, could have done different? There's a million things like that, but I don't sit there and think about them all day long. What I think is like, hey, here's the lessons that I learned from them. I will make those mistakes again and move forward. Every single day for me, it starts at gr you know ground zero. I've got to I've got to. Go forward with an open mind, with a humble mind, looking at the world. When somebody gives you feedback, you listen to it. Number one, you gotta be humble. And if you're not humble, you're not looking for feedback and you're not listening to it. No feedback, no improvement. Feedback is, is built upon being humble. Everything that I look at, I try and look at from a humble perspective. It's just, and if you don't do that, it's gonna mm. be a problem. Yeah, yeah. If I'm looking down the sights of my weapon and I'm shooting, my world is this big. The minute that I stop shooting, point my weapon at high court, take a step back and actually look around, I can see infinitely more. Eventually you gotta start doing it. As a leader, you should be listening 98% of the time and talking 2% of the time. We watch those who work, we're motivated by those who work, but we never put in the work. If you're going to conquer your day, conquer your week, nobody is going to outwork you. From this moment on, I need you to give it everything you have. You know, the number one excuse is I don't have enough time. I always tell people there's 168 hours in a week. If you get eight hours sleep a night, well, there's 50 plus hours gone. You still have 110, 112 hours left. If you work 60 hours a week, you still have 55 hours left to go do what's important to you. So I don't really buy the time excuse, but that's the number one excuse that I hear. It's time to get real. It's time to get raw. It's time to look ourselves in the mirror and come to the resolve that this version of ourself is not going to carry us in the stretch. That I've been this version of myself long enough that if I don't change, if I don't do something about this, then I'm gonna find myself bankrupt. A man is rewarded in public for what he does in private. Discipline is the single most important thing that you can use when it comes to being successful. 
Motivation is fleeting. No one wakes up motivated every single day. The key to success that you're looking for, the thing that's going to make your dreams come true is simple discipline. It's doing what needs to be done even when you don't want to, even when you're not motivated. You're only disciplined once a week. You're only determined twice a week. You're only, you're only enthusiastic about the journey on Sundays or Wednesdays. And once you get, once you get a covenant, once you make a covenant with who you believe God has called you to be, and you say, you know what? I'm going to commit to this. You're going to put the blood. You're going to put the sweat. You're going to put the tears in. You're going to lose sleep. You're going to go days without eating. You're going to do whatever it takes to make the sacrifices necessary to manifest we give up too early. And if we just had a little bit of perseverance, if we just worked a little bit harder and just took it a day at a time, our dreams would come true. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said, you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. When I start off my day by investing in myself, I set the tone for the rest of my life and everything else falls into place because I've set a precedent that I'm important, that I'm worth it, that I matter. So I tell people, invest in you first and then you have the energy, the drive, the passion to just uplift everybody else in your circle. Physical is the easy part. See, the physical part, all you gotta do is show up. If you could show up, again, be all in, ask some questions, maybe we'll add be willing to suffer a little bit into that mix, you will be okay. The psychological preparation, that's a different story. I always say the mind is primary, and I always say that a, a strong mind is a catalyst for change. When you see the best athletes in the world either perform really well, or on the other hand, completely bomb out, it's because of that muscle that lives between the ears. We only have so much real estate in our minds and our hearts. We only have so much bandwidth in our mental capacity. And the more distractions, the more delusions, the more negativity that we allow to take up real estate in our hearts and in our minds, the less energy we have to fulfill the call, to fulfill destiny, to manifest the idea. Everything that you think about, that you meditate on, everything that has to your attention has to be worth your time. So now it's time to navigate and do an appraisal of everything that's in our life, everything and everybody in our life. Time to do an appraisal and ask it and ask them this question. Are you worth my time? If you're not, it's time to unplug. Time to unplug. Time to unplug. Three rules Bobby Maximus lives by. Number one, show up every single day. Number two, when you do show up, you want to be all in. You want to be 100% present. And number three, be curious. Ask some questions along the way. Don't be scared to admit that you don't know everything. And if you can learn a little bit, along with showing up and being all in, the world is yours. If you want to be good at something, if you want to transform your body, you've got to spend 130 quality hours. And the next question I'm always asked is, what does that look like? It's an hour a day of dedicated practice for six straight months. If you want something, if you want to be good at something, you want to accomplish something, you've got to put in the time. And the minimum amount of time that you can put in is an hour a day of dedicated practice for six straight months. If you want to be good at something, you've got to do it every day. Like we look at people like LeBron James. Why is he good at basketball? Because he does it every day. You look at Wayne Gretzky in hockey. Why was Wayne so good in hockey, arguably the greatest of all time? Because he did it every day. And so my number one piece of advice to people, if you want to be good at something, whatever that thing, that you desire is, whatever your passion is, do it every single day. That's the real secret to success. Mm.
We celebrate athletes and we celebrate critical thinkers and innovators and actors and we praise them and coin them our heroes and we follow them by the millions. We love what they do in public, but you don't know the story behind the glory. You don't know the blood, the sweat. You didn't see the tears that they cried, the prayers that they prayed, the countless weeks where they went without sleep to get where they are. When you see somebody that's successful, your gut reaction is to think they're lucky. They had a great trainer. They had it easy. If I was in their shoes, I could do it too. And the thing that I would want to say is, these people work harder than you can imagine. They show up every day. They do the work. They suffer. And so when you see somebody on a screen, rather than criticize, be grateful. Rather than try to cut them down, maybe try to learn a little bit from them because the, the amount of dedication that goes into that craft, a normal person will never understand. Mm. The secret of change is to focus all of our energy, not on fighting the old, but building the new and specifically behind closed doors when nobody's looking, when no one is there to affirm you, when nobody's there to validate you, when nobody is there to agree with you, you build in the dark and you announce it when it's finished.